Hi guys, welcome to the channel where shit is always interesting. Right now it is National Autism Month, something I know first hand about as I have worked with a few people that have suffered from Asperger's Syndrome, which is a form of autism. It's a lesser form than autism. In fact, it kind of just stops you being sociable and makes you not read the body language cues, the vocal tones and the facial expressions that you make when you talk to people which you don't necessarily notice in an obvious way but the subconscious part of your mind sees all these slight different body languages and facial expressions that the face makes when people are talking to you or when they're standing around or waiting for anything or basically all the damn friggin time and what Asperger's and Autism does is it stops you from being able to understand what's going on in front of you so that you end up being in a socially awkward situation for yourself where other people would find it comfortable because their subconscious can take in information without the brain thinking about it or having to work out the data and then relay to how your voice should sound when you're saying a joke or when you're greeting somebody who's got a frown or when you're taking the piss out of somebody who's got a smile you have to do it with a certain tone so that they know you're joshing or you're joking about and people with Asperger's syndrome can't do that and people with autism sometimes it can vary in fact between degrees of how bad it is sometimes it can just be bad enough that it stops you from knowing facial cues but sometimes it can be so bad that it then comes with a whole host of extra syndromes on top like anxiety and being afraid of open spaces being afraid of crowds and not understanding, not, you know, being socially awkward in personal social situations as well. And it can get so bad that you get twitches, you get nervous, you can't speak, your mind literally goes to mush. And it doesn't matter how much psychology or how deeply you look into it, it's a really hard thing to overcome, especially the more extreme it is or it gets and sometimes it can leave people with the mentality of a child or a teenager. So it's surprisingly worse than most people think. Most people I think when they think of autism or Asperger's they generally think the typical slow kind of special kind of kid that everybody used to do in the 80s when Blue Peter had a handicapped kid on there and he was primarily there going Duh. that's what people probably think when they think of autism it does they don't really think of how detrimental it could be because learning difficulties something that I know about because I used to work in the field is something that you think people should be able to get over after a while of repercussion and after a while of doing the same thing and showing them how to do it you would figure that they would learn and understand but not all of them do a few amount of people that suffer from autism or Asperger's don't get it to the extent where it's so bad that they can't progress further in their mental age but it does take them longer to get there and it also takes them longer to feel comfortable in social environments. But in honour of Autism Month I went online to see which famous people had suffered from autism or a varying degree of it and I found out that Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart the great composer suffered from autism which is something I can understand as he generally did kind of irk people that were around him and he 
definitely annoyed a lot of upstanding people with his personality but with the autism also came the space within his mind that would usually be taken up with understanding social cues in learning music and being able to write music without even having to do a demo or have a keyboard in front of him because his mind could hold so much more information and was rewired in such an interesting and weird way that he could do these things. Something you generally don't think about when you think of autism or people that have it. You don't think that they're going to be intelligent in another way or that it's going to be something of a bit of a gift towards that person like Amadeus Mozart, but it can be. Having a disability doesn't always mean that you're going to be held back in life or that it's going to be detrimental to your life. Daryl Hannah was also diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and it got to her so much that she stopped hanging around, people went on sets, she didn't go to premieres, she didn't go to red carpet events and that's why you ended up not seeing her so much because she got blacklisted for being unsociable. But she was still a good actress and she made some great films and she is still being an actress. It's more of her mental state over what she thinks about the Asperger's is doing to her, that kind of hinders her, her. You can get over this wall that some people do suffer from when they have Asperger's. And you can get over it and you can have a normal and good life, but there will be times when it will be hard and people around you won't understand why, because you seem so normal most of the time. But then again, don't we all? Tim Burton was also diagnosed with Asperger's by Helena Bonham Carter, his wife, whilst researching a role into Asperger's. She found out that a lot of Tim Burton's traits, which are the traits that she loves about him, are actually the trait of the Asperger's syndrome that he has. So without the Asperger's syndrome, Tim Burton wouldn't be the man that he is and he probably wouldn't have given us some of the fantastic videos and films and short films and animations that we have had from him over the last two and a bit decades. Andy Warhol surprisingly also suffered from Asperger's and autism which is something I'm not surprised about. There's always been something about his artwork that I couldn't quite place my finger on and when you see him in the old interviews and things like that there's always something a bit weird about him and it's probably due to the Asperger's syndrome but yet again it let him think about art in a different and weird way and it worked it was something new it was something fresh and it made him rich and famous because of the syndrome that he had not so much of a downside in his life one I'm not surprised about having a learning difficulty and being a bit slow on the mental side is Courtney Love. She was supposedly diagnosed by a few of her therapists as having autism, but personally I just think that's a sugar-coated way of saying, you want crazy bitch. And one of the more famous and celebrated celebrities out there who suffer from Asperger's is Dan Aykroyd, one I'm really surprised about. But according to The Guardian in 2007, during an article with him, it said that as a child, Dan Aykroyd was expelled from two schools for acting up and a psychiatrist had diagnosed him with mild Asperger's syndrome. He also suffered from tics and showed signs of obsessive compulsive disorder, something that also comes along with Asperger's syndrome and autism because one way to really help anybody that has Asperger's or autism is to keep them in a set routine, keep them doing the same thing day in, day out, because it's not so much the part of your mind that thinks about having a cup of tea or having something to eat or whether or not you need to, the loo that depicts your routine. It's more to do with your abdula oblongata which also controls your emotions as well. But the more routine you have 
and the better you do at it and you keep at it, the happier you become and the more ingrain and inset it gets in your deeper and unconscious side of your brain. Not the unconscious side that is linked with thinking, but the unconscious side that is linked with waking up, getting ready, doing stuff and muscle memory. And that, because it's stored near or with your obdula oblongata, which controls your emotions, makes you happier and keeps you going, makes you more controlled for your carers so that if you do suffer from extreme autism, you can get a lot of help just by staying in the same routine, seeing the same faces and the more that the patient or the sufferer is in a routine and happier, the easier he is to get things done for, to help out, and the happier the carer becomes, therefore the carer is going to be looking forward to seeing this patient and to helping him out and is going to be bringing that happiness in with them even if they don't know it and even if the person with autism or Asperger's isn't going to fully recognise their social cues, they will still recognise the fact that you're coming in with a smile or a pissed off frown on your face. So there are certain things you can do within their lives to really help and enrich them which aren't heavy lifting or time consuming or hard work, it's just simply keeping them in a good simple day by day routine. But if you do suffer from mild Asperger's and you find it really hard to get into social cues, then there is this great quote from Temple Grandin that goes, The thing about being autistic is that you gradually get less and less autistic because you keep learning, you keep learning how to behave. It's like being in a play. I'm always in a play. And it's true. You can still hear a way a voice is being said and you can still remember the social cues that were passed on in this conversation and if you think about it long enough to the point of probably frustration and you connect it with the memories of what happened afterwards, the outcome of the situation, you might be able to understand a bit better the social cues that people and the people around you use. I'm not going to say it's going to be a big help when you're out and about by yourself, but around friends and mates and keeping everything happy and just going with the flow a bit more and keeping yourself happier than thinking about what's going on around you is something you really have to do along with a good healthy routine. But this is National Autism Month. I really hope this video has informed you and hopefully helped a lot of people out with a few thoughts on how to look after themselves or someone they know that suffers from Asperger's or autism. Thank you very much for watching the Jekyll69 channel where shit is always interesting. Remember to subscribe and comment to my channel and until next time, take care and keep smiling. This is the Jekyll69 channel where interesting shit happens every day. So remember to subscribe and comment to our channel for interesting shit to do with the world of technology. Hits on Twitter, film reviews, my life with Android and Kickstarter. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and comment. And until next time, keep your shit interesting.